But uh, you pull and pay in Penn Hills. I'm looking for a third brake light for my charger and a wiring harness for a fuel pump for Warren Sonata. So you print these out and it tells you row 27, car 43. Uh, so we'll start there make our way to the yard. I'm using a wheelbarrow so it's kind of tough for me to film while I'm walking. I don't have a holder here so I'll just keep pausing it. All right so they have all the cars up on these uh, wheel rims two pieces welded together like jack stands and I forgot to get a map but uh, I'll be able to find it. So this section's trucks and SUVs. I have to find the cars. And I'm looking for road number 27. Alright, so I'm still in the uh, truck SUV. But I wanted to show. I'm not really sure what they do in this yard here. Um, some of these cars. I don't know if they're claimed. Or if they're pulled aside to pull certain parts off. But obviously at some point they smash them press them together for scrap so this building over here and that pile of cars and even some over here are ready for scrap all right so hyundai is obviously an import i'm looking for 27 row they're marked on the end cars usually what row row 24 25 all right so here we are at row 27 I don't know the numbers on the cars. Recommend you get a map when you come down, but you never know what's left on them, what's not. But there's how they they have them all. They're pretty sturdy. Makes me a little nervous sometimes. I haven't crawled under them, but let's see if we can find this Sonata. Of course, the fronts are all smashed on some, so it makes it a little hard. I better go back. Here. Oh, there's one there. I don't think that's it, though. That's to be a different row. All right, so they have these inventory stickers on, so you know what year you're looking at. And hopefully, the harness is still here. Yep. Little water in here, but that I'm going to take the whole harness and that cover plate, cut the wire as far up as I can get it. I'll show you in a minute what's wrong. Okay, we should be able to access it from the back seat here. Yeah, there's a little bit of water, but not a problem. So, nice thing about the fuel pump on this model car. You can actually, you don't have to drop the gas tank. This panel is on top of the gas tank. And there's the wiring harness. So. All right, so I'm on the other side. This is where I'll come over to cut the harness. So I can, again, so I can get it as far up stream as I can. That way Warren can get a good splice. And. As you can see, it's full water. You know, the windows are all broken out. So, you know, these things have a limited life, even if the parts aren't gone. They, uh, they rust and fill up with water. Okay, so this is their wheelbarrow. Uh, some days, I've been here when it's really crowded on Black Friday and you couldn't get a wheelbarrow or a cart. But you have to bring your own tools. So, I have a this crescent set I bought many, many years ago at Sam's Club pretty much as a, a good foundation for mechanics tools. In that bag, I have some gloves and some wire cutters. All right, so four Phillips screwdrivers holding the panel on. And I didn't bring a knife. I should have brought in a utility knife. This is taped on, but I can rip it, I'm sure. So 
All right, so we gotta pull out four screws. All right, so screws removed. And if we lift up the panel, there's your assembly. That has, that assembly, I think they call it a module, fuel pump module. It has the fuel pump, the sending unit for the fuel gauge, and the pressure sensor for the EVAP uh, emissions control system. Uh, his original uh, symptom was and check engine light, which said the EVAP system problem. Then months, months later, suddenly his gas gauge went from half. He knew he had a full tank down to zero, empty. And then that day, or the next day, when he went to work, he couldn't start the car. So we had a, you know, it seemed odd that the three are fairly unrelated until we realized that this module contains all three of those, and it was most likely a wiring problem. When he removed the panel on his car, he found that some rodents had chewed through all the wires. So they, you can see the ground is right there. This is the gas tank. So they just crawled up on there and chewed through his wires. So he has it temporarily spliced them underneath, which is exposed to the elements. You can do that. Um, you should waterproof it. But uh, what we're gonna do is get this harness, should be really cheap, and I'll let you know how much they charge me, but uh, cut it off as far up as we can, and then Warren can actually replace this whole panel. Uh, you know, if he could throw away the connectors and everything he has here, replace this whole panel, and then splice his wires together up in the trunk, which is much cleaner, more reliable, it's not exposed to the elements, and we even bought some, uh, mouse proof like duct tape that we're going to tape all the wires in uh, it's impregnated with whatever that chemical is that comes from uh, hot peppers so it's sort of like pepper spray impregnated tape and that's what uh so we ordered some of that and we hope because i'm just worried that the mics are going to come back uh and this is the only compatible car they have it you pull and pay so if we have this one chewed through i don't know what these harnesses cost if you can you'd have to buy them at the dealer and i would expect them to be extremely expensive so that's what we're gonna do okay so it's just two connectors we've removed them uh i'm gonna go on the other side and pull this continue to pull the cable up and see how far we can get